Well, you can also say Lapas any time of the day. It means hi, just a little bit shorter, isn't it? Easier to remember, Lapas, Lapas, yes, short and easy. So, well, very warm welcome to Vilnius, the capital of uh, Lithuania. And I'm going to be with you today. So first uh, we are going uh, to explore the present capital of this country, Vilnius, and then in the afternoon uh, those of you who are going uh, with us for the optional tour, so we will continue to Trake, to uh, medieval uh, capital, which is uh, 27 kilometers, 17 miles west from here. You see 2,000 sculptures, all molded with fingers by two Italians and 300 local Lithuanian artists. So well now uh, we are driving along the river, Vilnius stretches along two rivers. Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania since the beginning of the 14th century. In 1323, capital was moved from Prague to Vilnius. Uh, next year the city is going to celebrate its 700 years anniversary uh, birthday as the capital. So the founder of the city is Lithuanian uh, Grand Duke Gedi Minas. So he was the one who moved uh, the capital from there to here at the beginning of the 14th century. And now, as our coach is coming closer to the territory of the castle, uh, which is a bit in the distance from right on the other bank, uh, I'd like to mention we have a very beautiful legend about the foundation of this city. Uh, the legend dates us back to the 14th century, and uh, according to that legend, the capital of this country was still in Trake. When uh, Duke Gediminas, he decided to come here for hunting. There were so many forests that grew on this side. And well, it was getting too late for him to travel back home those 17 miles, so loud that it seemed that there were hundreds or even thousands of them. Well, very unusual dream. So Duke wanted to have his dream explained next day. And the meaning of his dream was that he was supposed to build a castle on top of the hill where he spent his night. He was supposed to build the whole city around that area. And well, the fame of uh, this castle, the fame of uh, this city had to spread all over the world to be a perfect location for the new capital. As already from 1200s, it was very important for Lithuanians to protect themselves from the attacks of Teutonic Knights or German Knights. So, well, what a good view we have on our right, yes, and you can see there is a funiculus. Later you will have two hours of the free time and we will finish not far from the castle area, so if some of you will be interested maybe to use the funiculus, we will show you the direction where to go for a good panoramic view. If you'll keep now looking to your right, we can see the confluence of two rivers. Small tiny river Vilnia flows to our second longest Neris. Uh, river Vilnia is the one that gave the name to this city, as uh, well we can hear that uh, both words, the name of the river, the name of uh, this city, they share the same root and uh, the word Vilnia means small wave. Then uh, from there they meet the Baltic Sea. The distance from the capital, from Vilnius to the Baltic Sea, is 300 kilometers. Well, once the population was bigger, once uh, almost 3.2 million people lived in, in this country, but the population is declining. Well, I can already see St. Peter's and Paul Church front left. It was built a little bit in the outskirts of the old town. So soon we will we will arrive. Uh, well, Lithuania is a Catholic country, as 80% of population in this country are Roman Catholics. 5% are uh, Russian Orthodox, and then we have uh, smaller religious uh, communities. Take some pictures, and then we'll let you know what time we'll be meeting back on the coach, same place in the parking, to continue to the old town. So. Once we'll be getting off the coach, we can switch our listening devices on. Inside the church we can take pictures when there is uh, no service, uh, there should be no service uh, now, so we can take photos. 